On this episode of Geek Fix, we'll be talking with feature film and game animator India Bernardo about her story as well as all the tips, tricks, and tools necessary for becoming a character animator. Stay tuned! This is your Geek Fix. <laughs> Introduction wise, we've got India Hi. joining us from Canada, originally from the UK <laughs> here in the US. Does that yes, does all make exactly. sense? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, tell, tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us a little bit about uh, what, what you do and, and how you wound up doing that. Uh, so, I'm currently a character animator. I work at Sony. Um, we work on, uh, at the moment, I'm working on like a, a Netflix unannounced feature film. Okay. And the the company works on a very uh, a variety of stuff at the moment. So um, they worked on Over the Moon and some other things that have come out recently. And uh, it's really cool environment, lots of really talented people. And to get to here, I have done a variety of uh, VFX features, uh, commercials, uh, short films, um, all sorts of things within the that sort of animation industry, I guess. And before that, I I went to university. I'm trying to remember now. Back and back. <laughs> it's like trying to say the alphabet back. Um, then I went to yeah. I was at university. I studied animation actually. Um, and that was kind of, it was a bit of a left, uh, what's a curveball, I'll say, um, because I, all the way through school and college and sixth form, all that stuff, I was dead set on being a painter. I was like, I'm just going to paint. That's it. Um, and I think there were some very little voices somewhere in the back of my head thinking, oh, that doesn't sound very like stable. <laughs> uh -huh. Um, but I really liked art and I really w love computers and technology. So I, some, I just, I'd heard about animation and a couple of people a few years above me had gone to the university I went to in the UK. And I thought, well, I'll, I'll look into it and give it a go. Uh, I watched some making of uh, Monsters Inc. DVD oh, yeah. thing. And I was, I remember seeing them talking about putting all the hairs on Sully. And I remember thinking, that looks really fun. <laughs> and I, I, got, <laughs> I got to university and found out how technical that side of things was. And I'm not very technically minded, in it, at least it, to that level. And I was like, okay, I, I would definitely want to go more, um, uh, I guess, artistic side of things. And yeah, animation just seemed like it was a kind of mixture of everything, drawing, painting, acting, all the kind of things I'd explored. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so at university, I had no idea what was, I was doing. A lot of people at the university had been doing it since they were like 13 or something at home, playing around with it. And I was like, I, I have no idea. Um, and then through university, I got in contact with Framestore, actually through my dad. Okay. Um, and that just, it kind of went from there really. And I got really interested in this whole film industry thing. Um, yeah, it's just really cool. Well, and, and I mean, you've been involved in some, so speaking of like Netflix, for example, or at least this is how I know a couple of shows that you were involved in. Uh, so the Willoughby's, mm -hmm. uh, which, which I want to come back to. Uh, and then, uh, here it's called leap. You told me you, you know, it by a different name. Yeah. So it, I think in Europe and Canada, it's called, um, ballerina. And in the U.S., it's called Leap because of the distribution companies. Right. Really. They're like marketing. There's reasons. there's a lot of – I've seen that you kind of collected some of the different poster variations on some different shows uh, because they do. They release it differently, different name, and sometimes even even change the characters, like the, yeah. the yeah. aspects so the, and things. Yeah, for Leap, they had different – a few different voice actors, I think, and re, like, did, redid the voices over the top. Right. Of our animation, which is so strange. When you watch it, you're like, oh, I don't. Like, <laughs> it, it feels very disjointed when you see it because you, you know, you've heard those little voice, 10 second voice clips for like six months going over right. and over and over. And then you see a different voice and it's, it, yeah, it's very bizarre. How, how but, does yeah. that work? I mean, so as far as your workload goes, like, how do, what do you receive and then what do you do with it and send it on as? Yeah. So ideally, they, 
ideally, what would happen is the story would be fairly locked and they would record all the voice acting before you start animating. So you have what you need. Sometimes things get delayed or like actors schedules are offset. So you might have to animate to maybe a scratch voice, which could be just someone that's from the office or someone like that maybe is in the story department or something. Just reading the script kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So sometimes like that can be a bit weird and you might get, uh, because of that, uh, you might get um, like a retake on it where they do record the voice actor eventually. And then you might have to like fix some of the stuff just to sync it up a bit better. Mm -hmm. um, then there's a thing called ADR where if they do change the voice actors after all the animators have left, they'll get the actor to watch the clip, like watch the film and do the voice acting to that. Oh, and try okay. and sync it up from their side. Post animation then. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Uh, okay. So that that can happen. So uh, like that um with Leap, they when they changed it, all of our team had gone. We'd all mm -hmm. left and gone to other things. And um yeah, they re they record uh by yeah, by just watching it. Um and mouth I, flaps. They match yeah, the, the mouth yeah, flaps. Yeah, basically, yeah. It's yeah. pretty I, I can't imagine doing that. It must be quite hard to being forced into like to act this way. Um but yeah, that's that's basically the process we will get the dialogue um in with our animation like launch from the director. He'll he'll say what he wants from these sequence and these shots. Mm -hmm. And then you'll take that back to your desk and listen to the audio a lot <laughs> right. and try and like here for anything like maybe imperfections or little breaths or um just little uh to i guess little sounds and um connections that you can make the character feel like they're really connected to the voice that's coming out of them mm -hmm. so yeah. do, so when you get this right now you're not are you going back into the office yet or are you uh no no, no. so still. how does it come to you right now uh so actually we have um it's basically, it's like the size of a hard drive, but it's a portal. Oh, thing. yeah. They, call, they basically call Teradici portals. Um, and we virtual desktop two of the computers in the oh, in man. the office and the, on the server, I guess. Um, and then we can work from home like that. So they give us those and they set us up with the monitors and everything. Uh -huh. And then everything um, works through that network. So we can pull, they, they basically have all the audio and everything uh, preloaded into our scenes. Right. Um, and then things like we'll have director reviews and um, launches and they'll that would be happen on Zoom. Well, we use Google Hangouts, but um, yeah, you know, same sort of thing. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, and it, it doesn't, it's not too like. It's not glitchy or anything, huh? No, yeah, it's wow. pretty good. Yeah, there's not too many issues. Um, I think they're like, I think most people have been quite surprised how fairly seamless it is, com you know, compared to it, what it could have been, I guess. Do you send them the renders or do you do you just send them your, like, the raw file or what? what is it exactly that you're so saving? So we the have, app? we save the, the main animated file, which they, um, what, what would be the right way to explain that yeah so we save the file and then we will publish that which sends that into their pipeline mm. so it will export a render for them it will export the actual geometry caches from the animation so it's sort of baking everything out and sending that to the next department so lighting would then be able to be able to make it look all pretty and lovely right um we also will submit play blast which is just like nothing fancy. There might be a few lights for, for presentation purposes. Mm -hmm. um, and that's usually what we see the most in terms of sending it to the director, making sure he likes what he sees. And then we'll do a couple of uh, preliminary um, render tests just to check that like nothing's like breaking on subframes and like spinning around right. and anything like uh, the motion blur can break and like make everything look really uh, wacky, wonky, if the, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, like if there's something going on that really off, off the into the subframes, it can go a bit bizarre. So it's just like a quality check, I guess. Yeah, that sort do, of thing. Do you also do anything like dailies or anything like that? Like how yeah. do you? you yeah. Do? So we usually have um, 
dailies. Actually, at the moment, we've been having them twice a day. So I guess it's... Oh, really? Wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, so they'll, it depends on how busy the day is. Yeah. Usually we have them in the morning and the soup will go over anything that anyone's got to show. Uh-huh. Uh, it's usually to find out if there's any more questions we need um, from the director or if there's enough uh, notes to go off of before we show the director again. Yeah. Um, and then director reviews we have about three times a week. Mm-hmm. And then some of those days, yeah, if there's time, they might put another like, well, rounds, dailies uh, at the end of the day, just in case anybody has anything. Um, it's very, uh, I guess the work from home thing makes it kind of flexible in that they can be like, oh, we can just pop around in now and go to Google Meets or Hangout or whatever it's called. Right. Um, because you don't have to book a room or anything. So, so do, I mean, how many people right now, say on the project you're working on right now, like how many people are you talking that are all animating at the same time? Ooh, this show, I lost track a bit. Um, uh, let me think. We, when I started, there was about 15 of us, which was last mm. August. And now I think we're at about uh, 25, 30 people. Um, all the films I've been on previously have been 30 animators. Mm-hmm. Um, and this, uh, Sony in particular... I, are quite notorious for having a lot of people, like a lot of animators at least on the show and other departments too. Um, so at the moment, we're actually quite small in the context of the of the company because some of the other shows have maybe 100 animators. Um, so I think it's going to get busier. Um, so we'll see, we'll see what comes. Wow. Um, but at the moment, it's fairly small, but it's, I mean, in my context, it's like full team. <laughs> So, right, right. Yeah. So but, I'd be, I'm, wow. I'm excited to see how, how that works and how it grows and how they, like, it's interesting to see how they manage it and all that. Can you talk, can you talk at all about this project or is it, it's, no. a, compl- it's a secret. Yeah. <laughs> I really want to say. That's so okay. Hard. No, yeah. no, that's cool no. though. Okay. So, but so soon. do you know when, when like it would be released ish? Are we talking uh, like next year or a couple of years from now? Yeah, I think it's early next year. As Is far it? As I, know, I okay. think. But uh, yeah, I don't. They haven't announced anything yet. I don't think. Um, mm. So hopefully soon. Uh, we'll see. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. you got all the non-disclosure stuff going yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. Some usually by now I found that there's usually like some press releases or yeah. something, but. We haven't heard anything yet, so oh, it's probably okay. it, probably brewing. I imagine it must be fairly soon, but oh. it's definitely different with streaming. I think um, we at at Braun, where we did uh, the studio where we worked on the Willoughby's, uh-huh. Netflix came and did a marketing presentation, <clears throat> and the their format is basically, um, I think, is a lot shorter than like a, a theatrical release would be hmm. because of like audience fatigue you know they right. don't want to hear about a film two years that's not going to be streamable yeah. next next week you know yeah or that thing. day <laughs> yeah yeah like all right can I watch it now no yeah, it's, yeah. it's not out for two years oh, why right. are you announcing it then on yeah, netflix yeah whereas like the- theater it's like star wars is coming out in five years like oh yes okay yeah. five years great right um so i think it's it's it the timelines are so different now um, yeah. So it sort of skews you because you're like, I want to talk about it. I, I usually can by now. Oh, but yeah. Yeah. I think it's just because they hold like, it closer to their chest. Yeah. You're like a secret agent. You get all these <laughs> yeah. <laughs> underground yeah. secrets. Yeah. I mean, I worked on, um, we worked on Crash Bandicoot. Um, oh, you did? One. Yeah. Oh, wow. Your and brother's a fan of that game. Yes. Did you oh, tell my gosh. I couldn't tell them. We, so oh, really? we were, yeah. They told us like we were not allowed to even breathe a word of it. Like, any to anyone anyway right and so you know there's usually like whoever's in the house will know obviously because you're working on it right and sometimes you right. might tell your mum because that your mum doesn't know yeah. anyone. just don't tell but anyone like we didn't tell any like we weren't allowed wow. to even talk like we were like too scared to say it to each other even though we were working wow. on it together and um we kept that so deadly silent and then when it came out i told my brothers and they were like oh what? you know they freaked out yeah um, now you're big time. Now you're respectable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that was so, that was so hard to keep secret because we yeah. only worked on it for like four or five weeks, and then it was didn't come out for like another eight months. 
or something. Oh man! <laughs> and we were just like, <sighs> wow. But yeah. So it, some something like that. Are you doing like Are you doing animation stuff like the short in between things? Or are you helping with the game animation so, or what? What were you doing there? So for that one, we did um, map animation. So the when they're on when you're selecting the levels, there's right. like little like. Bits of the characters like fall, yeah, like yeah. the characters like falling off the map, or they're walking to yeah. the next thing, or they fall down, or or whatever's happening to them. Uh, so we did um, some bits of those, and then we did um, yeah, and then some of the, when the map is formulating, we did some stuff with there's like entropy, and they come together, um, and we did a little bit of like I think it was Coco and Neo doing some like for like splatting their faces on the ground and stuff like that. It was fun. Uh, it was really cool. They'd done a lot of the uh, cinematics at another company, another studio. <laughs> um, and then I gameplay, I think was, they were, they had quite a few different um, companies work on it. Uh, we just had a little freelance thing that we'd helped out. But yeah, I mean, just to work on it a little bit was like a childhood dream. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. Jumping over to like the, the Willoughby's, uh, the thing that interests me about that is that it was this is 3D animated, mm -hmm. but was done in such a way because it was is emulating uh, a style that you'd see more like like what's done with this, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so like what uh, what would that be like Coraline and and uh, uh -huh. yeah. Kubo and things like that, right? Yeah. And uh, so I mean, honestly, the first time I saw it, I I went back and forth and thinking, oh, must be stop animation. But no, it was intended to to look that way. And it mm -hmm. and it did a great job. It looks like something by Arden or something like that. Um, so tell me a little bit about what the, what the process was like, uh, kind of thinking from that direction or, or trying to build things and, and animate things that are rigged to look different than stay standard 3D animation. Yeah, yeah it's definitely... Uh complicated i would say the um the, the funny thing is you reference aardman is the director has worked at aardman and oh really to do, yeah he did a oh. bunch of stuff for sean the sheep and um yeah he's very like he loves that uh style and uh -huh. so it, it's interesting it's great that it comes through i think um the yeah so the the style itself it's really tricky because 3D in itself, it's obviously mathematical program and doesn't want to do those things. Right. Um, it doesn't like when you're trying to force it to do something. It's not, you know, it's not linear. Mm -hmm. um, so the rigging side of it was, yeah, it's definitely like a struggle. There's building. You can't really build for every eventuality. And in a film like that, there's so many, every shot could be like, differently posed and differently designed that the rigs would be infinitely it like they would be so full of uh i guess like gadgets and things to make that shot work that they wouldn't be usable because it'd be too way too heavy mm -hmm. so there's things we use um where you can sculpt some of those poses yourself in the scene so you start to veer into modeling over rigging because there's just some shapes where you want to push, I don't know, like um, a maybe a really push profile with their like mouth all cut out and very right. 2D UPA or something. And there's only so so far the rig can do that. So, so were you basically doing stop animation except in 3D? Is that what yeah. you're describing? Yeah, basically. So you model yeah. each piece and the and like yeah. the yeah. 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 Okay. There's I there's definitely I uh, I heard that um the Hotel Transylvania um Films are much hev are much more heavily um, sculpted by the animators in that way. I think the Willoughby's was somewhere in between. We didn't do it because the budget was smaller mm -hmm. and the show was smaller. We couldn't do it for like every frame, but it did uh, move uh, a lot of that. It did drive a lot of that style, I think. Mm -hmm. And there's other techniques too, like um, they called it, oh, what do they call it? I think it was varied frame exposure where they they were focusing on showing the character for a certain amount of frames based on the uh, context of what was happening. So if 
if the character needed to be on every frame moving around fast and things, then that's fine. Mm-hmm. It, we call that on ones, um, which a lot of uh, sort of Disney and uh, Pixar animation would all be on ones. Mm-hmm. And then you have twos where the frame is exposed for two frames. Um, and then you can go threes, fours, five. You, you know, you can have a character hold a pose for two seconds if you needed to. Um, and that that really was like a cool base, I guess, like framework of how to start with that sort of stop motion uh, efficiency, I guess. Mm-hmm. Like you only need to animate what you need to animate. You don't have to like have them wobbling around and breathing just to sort of pretend they're alive. Right, right. In that, in that sense. Um, so there's a lot of that, like trying to work out the best way. For, and also like uh, you might, that might come down to a micro level of like how many characters are in the scene, which ones need to be the focus, which ones need to not be focused. And how can we use that varied frame exposure to change the focus of the scene? Okay. So less so, movement from some of those other characters and more. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So mm-hmm. you'd experiment with like um, exactly that, like maybe more movement, less movement, maybe one character is smoother Mm-hmm. Uh, and one character is more, uh, I guess, less less has less frames exposed, so it's just a contrast in that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's quite. A, it's it's not the easiest thing to explain. Um, <laughs> it's probably easier to show it, I guess. But well, show us. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I will. Um, if I mean, if you frame through any of the parts of that film, you'll see different shots have. You know, there might be five characters just not moving. They might mm-hmm. just be in a pose because you don't need them to move. Um, right. So, yeah. So I think that that whole style, that yeah, it sort of definitely comes from Ardman was, a, I think, a big influence. And what other? Uh, the director also worked on uh, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. Oh, yeah. So you can see where the sort of wackiness and the uh, Ardman <laughs> sort of combine. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I noticed the shoulder area is is done differently than you'd notice in a lot of in a lot of 3D animation. Like the mm-hmm. the way that the shoulders, uh, I don't know, the way that they fall. It's hard to describe. <laughs> it yeah. seems like yeah. yeah, you do have a different movement in this area uh, mm-hmm. because they use that a lot more in the claymation mm-hmm. than they do typically in in 3D animation. It seemed like you pulled from that, so that's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I think as well because of the exaggerated sort of anatomy, like they, like Tim, the main character, has those sort of um, bean arm. He's like very skinny mm-hmm. bean uh, shaped, and yeah, I think that makes a big difference, especially with the connection, like the the long neck and the right. shoulders. Yeah, it's yeah, definitely like trying to find that balance of you know, not spend the whole time watching their neck going, oh, what's happening there? Yeah. Concentrate <laughs> watching the movie, but also making it entertaining. Yeah. I, I got to admit, I, I'm sensitive to to some of the frame rate stuff, it seems like. Yeah. So, like, with that, I was definitely picking up on, and, and I was focusing in more on how to, which way did they do this? Yeah, and same thing yeah. with, like, I'm wearing the, uh, this is the, the uh, Spideyverse shirt. Oh, cool, yes. Did you yeah, see my, that? Yeah, yeah. That, that's Sony as well. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know they did. They played around with frame rate. So yes. throughout the movie, they they did different frame rates to kind of to literally give a different fill. Mm-hmm. And and that that bugged me. <laughs> oh no! Really? But, but uh, I do. I I think it's it's cool. It's it's yeah. really it's neat that they're they're attuned to that. And yes. so yeah. That's yeah. The cool. interesting. I think the interesting thing whenever I see debates about it, um, the frame. There's frame rate, which is, you know, uh, film is 24 FPS and, right. uh, you know, you've got 30 FPS and all that and different for TV and all that stuff. Right. But when it's um, in animation, uh, from our point of view, it's still 24 frames per second. We still have to fill the 24 frames. It's not ex- it's not shot on 12 frames per second or anything. Right. So it's the it becomes more of a choice. Mm-hmm. So like. um if a whole scene is shot uh, on twos, so like every other frame, the pose changes. Right. Uh, yeah, the animator is choosing how to how to show that, rather than being like, 
oh, we've rendered it and, you know, now it's, we've done half the frame rate type thing. Right. It's like a, it's definitely, it's interesting because, yeah, it's a creative choice, not a technical, like, blanket uh, setting. True. Yeah. Do, well, have you ever, uh, I, I don't know if, if you've seen too much of it, but like the TVs that do the smoothing. Um, oh, oh, it, yeah, we turn that off straight away. It, it's horrible, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. It just looks wrong. I don't know what it is. Yeah. yeah. My my other half, anytime we go to a TV shop or or uh, like a electronic store, he's like trying to turn them all off the smoothing. <laughs> <laughs> so like when people buy it, they're not, you know, sad. <laughs> right, right. Helping out the world in that yeah. way. That's a good way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's the other side of it. It's like it can be too smooth, I guess. Yeah. Do, you're doing some other styles of animation as well right now. I mean, you have your personal project. Can we talk about your personal project? Yes, 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 awesome. I can. I can talk about that one. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, I can. I don't know a lot about it, but I, I can kind of guess some things just based on the name. Okay, uh, <laughs> yes. So it's called Cat and Moth. Yeah. It's about a cat and a moth. Um, it's a, so that we have this fluffy white cat. Oh, actually. Yeah. I, I've been looking at that this whole time. The couch too. Oh, yeah, Is that? Yeah. My actually, my dad got this printed for me. Really? <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, go. so cool. Yeah. And then I got a little cat who is oh wrong way around. What? There we go. Oh, that is focus, cool. Is it? It doesn't want to focus. Yeah. But, <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, Ditto is a fluffy white cat, and she wants nothing more than to sleep in her favorite spot in the universe. Um, and obviously another little thing has its eye on it too. And uh, I've been working on it about, well, I, the other day I thought uh, it was about six years or something. Worked out it was about 10. Wow. Didn't realize. Um, and it's been a passion project. Um, me and a friend in London started it. And we, we thought we'd do it on our own. It'd be like a fun little thing. And it turned out into this like massive expanding uh, project. Yeah, like worldwide, like uh, people that all just wanted to be involved from all over the world. Um, I think we ended up with like over 90 people help us over the 10 years. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, we are just putting together now all the sort of festival packets and press stuff, um, doing some presentations. I've got one coming up in Germany in May which is pretty cool. Um, I, I saw you're speaking at FMX. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So FMX yeah. is in May, yeah. Um, so that's really exciting. And we've got quite a few sponsors for that, which has been really uh, integral to us getting it finished, really. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it, the style of that is, it's not dissimilar from the Willoughby's, but it's, it's more on the um, economy side, so we move even less. My my um, take on that was to only really move her if we needed to. Like, even if that means uh, maybe her head and her tail aren't moving and it's just her back, like she's breathing or something. Right. Uh, so that's, I guess, more limited stop motion uh, inspired, I would say. Um, yeah, that's been an incredible journey and I'm really I just really want to put it online now and show it to everyone <laughs> well yeah how, how are you going to release it are you just doing the 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 different uh festivals and things first or are you gonna yeah yeah I think well the plan the goal uh for the festivals was initially the reason the whole reason to do festivals for us was to network <laughs> right right which maybe not be as easy now with uh, yeah. them being all virtual at the moment uh, but so we'll do that for a bit. I don't know how it will, to, we don't know how it will work out this year with everything still going on and all that, but I hope that we can go to some in person at some point with it. Um, uh, usually the timeline is about 12 months, mm. I think. So you do all the festivals and then, I'm just going to put it online. I just want oh, yeah. I just want it online. I want everyone to see it. I I I want everyone on the team to be able to share it with everyone they know. Like they it wouldn't be complete without them. There's no mm -hmm. way. There's no way me and my friend would have been able to do it. So 
yeah, I just uh, if 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 the festival thing was less restrictive, like the rules and everything, I would have right. put it online straight away. Yeah. But there are some stipulations where they, you know, they don't want you to have it out. Of course, they want people to come to their festival, right? All right. Um, so yeah, it's a tricky balance of like patience and just really wanting to get it out. Well, there. yeah. <laughs> Do you do you do uh because I've seen some sketches that you did for it, uh mm-hmm. things like that you have mm-hmm. available for people to see. Um, oh yeah, yeah. We have a bunch um the the social media stuff, we have like quite a few uh things out there already, mm-hmm. but um it slowed down over the last six months, I say, while we're trying to finish the film. I was like, okay, the marketing is not our priority right now. Like we should just get the film done and then mm-hmm. we can you know. Focus on the other, yeah, the yeah, business exactly. end of things. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that that side of things is such a it's like another job. Well, um, yeah. So, yeah. So it's yeah, it's been it's been really fun. I keep looking at the sofa. It's been, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's so just cool, saying, right? It's, How neat. It's, yeah. Yeah. I, wow. It's, like it's so detailed too. Wow. I know. Yeah. That I was three D printed, huh? Yeah, it's pretty insane. I think you just took one of your assets and printed it, or yeah, oh, really? Basically, um, his colleague Matt does three D printing, mm-hmm. and he, yeah, him and my dad just put it together. Um, they had to make it uh, because our our asset was, I guess, made of polygons, which aren't necessarily printable oh yeah or quads i guess yeah and then they so i think matt made it so it's triangles yeah i'm not i'm not the most easy conversion person, not a big right? deal. yeah 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 some some things um so yeah i can't remember what material this one is but i had another one that was sand stone i think but yeah it's um yeah they're really cool that really is nice. cool <laughs> I, I i was just thinking about it i guess you were also my very first interview i ever did on this site too technically or oh, both yeah? of them you're in the background Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's kind of funny. That's yeah. funny. Oh, that yeah. picture. Yeah. That's Thanks, pretty man. good. <laughs> so what's your, I, I mean, I guess first the thing related to that project is, do you actually have a cat or do you, like, oh, I do. do you have a reference? I do, yeah. we ha- Well, the original um, uh, inspiration were my two very old, now not with us cats. Aww, yeah. They lived to like 20. Um hmm. So they had a good inning, innings, uh, but now I have a cat called Walter who's actually being hidden in the bedroom because he's so loud. <laughs> <laughs> cool. um, but I can bring him out if you want to see. Him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. yeah. All right. Oh yeah. He was asleep. Oh. Mumped a little bit. Hi. Yeah. Hi, Walter. <laughs> What's to get your uh, filter there? Yeah. That is great. Yeah. He's so sweet. <laughs> He's usually very, ooh, he's usually very meowy. Uh-huh. So um, he was in the bedroom. So, so do you use mirrors or or models or like how do you usually figure out some of your some of your movements and your ooh, things like that? Yeah. Um. So what would I usually do? So it uh, for the longest time I would shoot reference, like film myself mm. on a video camera, and there's something about that. It's good because you you start to get a bit looser and not care with whatever you're doing. Right. But I, I find it a bit restrictive because, uh, I mean, one, I'm not very good at acting, <laughs> and and two, you know, usually the character I'm animating doesn't isn't always looking like me. Um, right. You know, if it's a creature or a school boy <laughs> with a really long neck, or it's you know, there's a variety, or you know, it could be a horse or something. That, right. You know. It's uh, so, yeah. So I find that a bit restrictive in in that being the only path of reference. So I tend to have a bit of a mixture. Um, I have a mirror, which I find really, really useful. Yeah. Um, pulling all sorts of faces all day. <laughs> you get <Right>. really achy. <laughs> um, <laughs> and the other stuff is usually I get a sort of a sort of mood board. I think of what I've been trying to coin it as lately is. I will grab like stills from videos I think are relevant. Mm-hmm. Maybe, uh, you know, it might be this person's excited and I'll go and look at YouTube and look at for excited videos. <laughs> and instead of just like taking the whole video and be like, I'm just going to copy that. 
I'll right. take like images where I'm like, oh, that still is, you know, it feels like that moment, I guess, or that feeling or whatever it is. And I'll grab all those images. I might grab some videos and put them all in a folder and just have a kind of a uh, smorgasbord of, uh, of this moment. Mm-hmm. And then I might then act out some stuff on my own. Um, usually the stuff I do is more for mechanics and movement. Like how does my arm do that if I'm leaning on right. something? Pivot points uh, and things like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just because my acting isn't great. <laughs> Sometimes it's okay. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, ah, that's quite a cool thing, but it's not, you know, it's not, it's not Oscar worthy or anything. Uh-huh. Um, so yeah, it's kind of a bit of a mixture. It's, it's a little hard to, um, uh, I don't know, explain for, I guess, for other people, because usually a lot of people start out with more linear um, approaches, I think. You know, like they shoot reference and then they use that to animate. Right. Or they use a 2D pass and they then use that to animate sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, at least how I found and um, with my like fellow student peers and stuff, that that was kind of how we went. And yeah, just over time, it's developed into a bit more... <laughs> It's a bit more chaotic, I guess, <laughs> um, which probably sounds counterintuitive. Um, but I think it's just how my mind works. I quite like like smushing it all together. <laughs> yeah, combining a bunch of references. Yes, for the- yeah. I mean, at, at, at work, they um, there was like someone had reference the other day, and they were doing in their building gym. They were doing like barrel rolling and forward rolls and stuff, and it was oh, like wow. pretty intense. And the supervisor was like please please don't hurt yourself um i just don't want to be you know i don't want to see you hurt you know break the back or something and oh, just, yeah. For, <laughs> just well for yeah reference. they they do a lot of uh don't they do a lot of motion capture over there for like the video games and things like that too i mean um yeah must... it depends on the production and what part of the um, the game or production it is right like for, in, for instance um me and my partner both worked on odd world the new oh yeah one that's coming out i think awesome. in a couple of days oh really um oh. yeah i i think soon and so for the um cinematics it's just hand keyed animation uh-huh. um and so that which was when i first started there i figured it's always oh, going to be like motion capture cleanup or something right. but no it's like proper hand key animation which is cool <laughs> Um, so, but I've used motion capture before in other, um, commercials and projects and, um, they're always, always the projects I've worked on where I've used motion capture, unfortunately, I guess for the motion capture world, less unfortunate for animators was that we always ended up just deleting it and reanimating it. Oh yeah. (laughs) Um, Makes sense. I worked on a couple where they did, it did stick. Um, Mm -hmm. it's just a different feel because there's less there's less you can do like if the director wants something you can't there's not some of it can be quite constraining uh, right. the skeletal rigging won't always work the yeah, same as their body is and exactly, things like that yeah. yeah um and some of the setups that i've worked with before where it's like well I actually you can't edit it you can only work on top of it mm-hmm. um things like that so i guess it depends on the budget and the production um i think it can be, I know there's a few companies that use it for um, laying out their film or like previs, which is really cool. I used that at, uh, where was I? At the third floor in London, they do um, previs and post viz, which is, uh, they'll block out the film, uh-huh. live action usually uh, with mocap and cameras. So basically and stuff. pre-film the film. Basically, yeah, yeah. yeah. Basically, yeah. especially if it's, basically if they're, if it's a heavy um, VFX film, I think, so they can plan like where the big dragon might be or whatever, you Mm -hmm. know, whatever the monster is um, or the visual effects. And then they do another thing called post-vis, which is they already have the film shot, but they're gonna have elements within the frame that are gonna be visual effects. uh, And they'll mock that in so the director can see how it will look before they go into like full on visual effects post-production side of things um so you some we did plug in mocap for some of that stuff because it i mean a lot of that stuff because it gets you very far especially Mm -hmm. if there's lots of people walking around and um i think i was doing stuff where they were like on a dock and there's lots of people and you don't want them all just to be like right like just (laughs) so um 
Unless that's the angle yeah, you're looking for. It's definitely a tool. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. It's definitely a useful tool for that for presentation, I think. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't used it as much uh, for things like games and stuff. I, I would be interested to see how that is utilized, mm -hmm. but I don't, yeah, I don't know enough about that. Do you I've still use? Emo I've been in a suit though. Have you really? Fun. With all yeah. the little things on it? Um, yeah, I've been in one of, uh, did one of those for some tests at Frame Store. They had a motion, I, I assume they still have it. They have a motion mm -hmm. capture studio. And then at university they had, um, I don't know why they had it, but it was they they put me in it and it's all hydraulics. Oh. It's it's very uncomfortable. Like it's hydraulics down each joint of you. And you have a what well, felt like a massive helmet. Uh -huh. And um really, really actually very complicated thing. And then um they put it all on me. It took ages to put on. And then we had to walk out of they wanted me to do it outside because I think. The, and maybe the exciting part of it was that they could do it. They didn't have to be in the studio. I think it recorded all of the oh, wow. data. It would send the, it. Oh, okay. Yeah. And wow. So we went outside and I had to run around in it and things. Um, uh -huh. But as I, as we were leaving, we had to go down some stairs and go outside and there's concrete. And then they're like, yeah, so just do some jumping and running around. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I'll, I'll sort of get ready for this. And they're like, by the way, the suit is worth like 20,000 pounds. I was like, what? <laughs> Wow. Like now I don't want to move. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it was just like really um very straight. And you can't it, well, I mean, this was like 12 years ago now. Um, but you couldn't it was some of the pistons would get stuck, so you're like, oh my arm is just straight now. <laughs> like, right. Like, yeah. yeah, capture um, that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and then you look back at the data and it was pretty cool, but huh. yeah, I don't know. I'd be interested to see like how that works in production like yeah gameplay and things like that i think there's some we just started playing the new star wars game oh yeah and some of that stuff looks amazing i don't know um how how that was made but the the cutscenes and everything and the gameplay is really cool um so yeah i guess there's everything's like a useful tool i suppose it's just different, right. used differently do you still use things like store storyboards and animatics and stuff like that? Or? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, they, it depends on the director usually uh, how, like what their af affinity is, I guess. Like if, mm -hmm. like with the Willoughby's, Chris, the director is, um, was a storyboard artist, like had come from a story background, still does it. Um, so he, there's a lot of work gone into the storyboards. So it it can be a whole like uh gold mine of like their insight and their their sensibilities. Right. Um some directors prefer, you know, the previs and the, the 3D seeing the camera and how it will be um like uh, laid out. So they might concentrate more on that. Um but each part of the process sort of builds on the next. Mm -hmm. Um the I find that with animation you're kind of you make the film a little bit backwards because you start with editing and editing all the, the stuff together mm -hmm. and then you have to execute it. And live action's a little different. I mean, there's still uh, directors and writers that will use storyboards with the script, but you shoot all the film and then you're editing it together as you go. So it's kind of, it's interesting how those, you can use the, oh, they're all the tools. You can just use them in different ways. What, what programs do you use? Um, so, uh, for storyboarding, I have mostly used just a uh, Photoshop or good old post-it notes and <laughs> pens and Sharpies. Yeah. The way it was meant <laughs> um, to be done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, uh, for 3D, mostly just stick to Maya. Um, okay. It, it's kind of, it's more or less industry standard. Mm -hmm. I think Blender's sort of making a rise now. It's um, free. Yes, exactly. Yeah, it's it's much more accessible mm -hmm. and free. Maya is not the cheapest. Then um, what else do I use? I mean, things like 2D. I use TV Paint, which is a European. Oh yeah, um, TV Paint. T T T D yeah. uh, program. Did you ever use like Video Bang or, or what was it called? Yeah, that's what it was called, wasn't it? Video Bang. Uh, I haven't. It used to be I used for it, like the I Simpsons thought... and things. I think. Used oh it. yeah, no, I. At uni, we used a bit of Toon Boom. Oh, um, Toon Boom. What am I yes. saying? Video Bang. <laughs> Toon Boom. 
Video yeah, bay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Same thing. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, they, it's, it's used quite a lot now for, I think, like, yeah, TV shows and stuff. Yeah. I think a, it's, a, it's got a lot of um, uh, facets, but I, I haven't used it since university. I think when I was leaving, they brought in, like, a 3D camera thing, which was pretty, like, oh, multi-plane cool. camera thing. But that mm-hmm. was a long time ago. Um, what else? Uh, just, I mean, like, Premiere, uh, mm-hmm. Photoshop. Mm-hmm. And I think too, um, I don't use too many. Um, Maya is probably the main thing for the animation side of things. Um, so if you had to recommend, uh, Maya would be the one to kind of get to know. The animation, mm-hmm. yeah, I guess even if um, you can't get hold of a, if you're in education, you can get an education license, mm-hmm. uh, which usually, so students can start um you know, I, I think when I first, basically my university used a uh, soft image. And mm. when I heard a lot of the companies use Maya, I just bought like how to use Maya book. Right. Um, and just went through. And it's all this the, like, thick. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, and just go through like how to model a penguin or whatever they, you know, little right. tasks they get you to do. So I just did that uh, in between um, summers and things just to sort of get to know the program. Right. Um, but yeah, most most places use it. Uh, Unity and um, mm. uh, what's the other one? Unreal are becoming yeah, Unreal Engine more popular now, which I yeah. haven't used, but um, that's probably if you're doing the VR into. stuff, that would be a that'd yeah, be a good one. And a lot of uh, a lot of the studios are looking into how they can utilize those softwares to mm. basically render and light a lot quicker. So yeah. I think TV is picking up quite a bit. Um, but yeah, I think for now, Maya is probably the, the anim- 3D animation anyway is mostly Maya, I would say. Mm. Um, a few studios use their own priority. Mm. Oh, like, oh pri- yeah. Priority software. I can't sure. If yeah. you work for Pixar, you probably use the Pixar stuff. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And they give you, you know, they train you on that. They give you like time to learn the program and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, but yeah, again, it's like. The cool thing with the softwares mostly is that they're a tool and they have all the same, more or less the same uh, setup. They might have different hotkeys and stuff. A lot of, actually, a lot of the softwares will say, do you want the Maya hotkeys? <laughs> oh, yeah. Because, yeah, because I can't yeah. remember, you know, I can't remember two. Um, so uh, once you learn the principles of one, I think it's not too hard if to transfer if, a, if another studio uses a different software. Yeah. Do you, yeah. you use, what do you use for hardware? <clears throat> oh, that's a good question. Um, I have, what do I have? I have a PC that is a bit of a um, mutt, <laughs> which is just built from bits and pieces over time. I don't know awesome. if it's if it's like, I don't think it's any brand now because it's a bit of everything. Um, and then I just, ha- I have a Cintiq. Oh, okay. Um, which which I, Cintiq do you have? Is it one that you can take the, on the go or is it a? Uh, no, it's just a monitor, but it's the 30, I think 13 HD. It's oh like wow! The, How many inches? Oh wow! Yeah, here's here's mine. Oh, this is, is outdated companion? now. Oh cool! Yeah, yeah. This yeah. is the Cinti two, I think. Nice. Is that the one? Is that goes on the go? I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, nice. Well, yeah. You got both both routes you can do, so it can also connect to the computer. But oh sweet! Um, okay. And then you have your tablet and stuff, but or your yeah. pen, but um, but at the same time, like. Yeah, the big, I mean, is it better to have the great big ones or is it, what do you kind of Ooh. prefer, something you can throw on your lap and knock yeah, something out? Um, I guess it depends. I've used the big one to animate on at uh, one of the studios I worked at in London. Mm. And it's kind of fun because you're like, oh, I feel like I'm in the scene and I'm animating. Right. <laughs> uh, and like you're moving stuff around, you're like, whoa. Whereas, you know, mm-hmm. usually with like, your, I usually use a, um, Wacom tablet to animate with yeah. anyway. And then on the screen, um, I think it was fun. I don't know how ergonomic I felt with it mm. f- for, cause it wasn't drawing. It was, you know, you're manipulating the character. Oh yeah. I, I it wasn't, it was a, about a month of using that. And so I, don't, I mean, I wasn't in like loads of pain or anything but I don't know if I could do it forever. Right. <laughs> um, Whereas the little one, I use a lot for drawing, uh, storyboarding. I mean, little, but the smaller one. Um, and it's pretty light. The big one is, it weighs a ton. Yeah. Um, you need a couple of people to help you move that, I think. 
Right. Uh, so I don't and know if it breaks, better. you're just sad <laughs> forever, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was more um, than my car. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Whereas I think maybe like if you're a painter or a 2D animator, it's probably, you know, the, the real estate is probably nice to be able to like use your shoulder to make those shapes and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I'm not sure what's better. For now, I'm pretty happy with the size I have. Uh, it's, well, I mean, my Wacom... Like my normal tablet is like, like it's about that. Oh size. yeah, like, it's about yeah. that big. But I can't move it because it's all the way over. Um, but Do yeah, you have all so, your hotkeys set up on that. Yeah, I have a few. Yeah, keys. on the side. Yeah. Um, and then it's on a it's on a uh, movable arm. Oh yeah. So I have it. Actually, I have it because this the that size doesn't have a uh, mount. We. <laughs> Duct taped it to, to oh, a laptop there you go. stand. Yeah, yeah. So just Jimmy like, rig it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> black duct tape all over it. But it, yeah. you, you know, you probably wouldn't notice if I didn't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Think, maybe. Um, yeah. So I say I think that's the main thing. Like a Wacom tablet, I find um, it, the it's I don't know for me the longevity of my arm, my wrist. Mm-hmm. Is more important. Oh, the cat back. Hello, Walter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, use, I find using a mouse, I get a lot of wrist pain. So uh, using the pen is, I I have to use the pen. Ready? Yeah, I I yeah. I guess it's. I don't know. It depends on what I'm doing with it. Have you tried? Uh, do you, Do you have an Oculus at all? Or have you ever tried the? Uh, oh yeah, we do. Yeah. Do you? It's hidden behind our um, fan. Oh Actually, yeah. yeah. That's the Quest One, the, yeah. Oh, I, yeah. Or, I can't remember which one we ended up with. But yeah, Oculus. Oh, Rift. Rift. Yeah. Oh, that's the Rift. Okay. Yeah. 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 So it's a bit old now. You know, the, I mean, have you tried any of the programs for modeling in there? Uh, I've tried. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty fun. Yeah. I like the, um, the painting and the sculpting. There's something so vivid about being in that space. And uh, I remember when we first set it up and I did some painting and stuff and I was like, I came out of it and I was like, oh, everything's a bit dull. Right. Now. <laughs> like, yeah, like, it's not quite it's, as it's bright. Just, yeah. 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 Um, I even, I, I mean, it's not VR, but I have uh, a virtual boy as well. Oh, you do? Yeah. Wow, no kidding? Those are worse than money now. I They're know, not good yeah. for your eyes, though, you know? No. I'm pretty sure that's why I have to wear glasses now. Yeah. <laughs> All that red and line it, stuff yeah. going by. Yeah. And it, and it has the um, auto pause thing, and I'd be like, nah. Oh, yeah. Keep yeah. going. Just, oh, I'm like, <laughs> um, yeah, my, my dad brought that back from America when I was a kid uh, for me. Uh-huh. And, um, yeah, I was obsessed with it, and I just kept it very like pristine. It's it's wow. all hidden in a box at the moment. I want to get it out, but oh yeah, um, that's a good yeah. display item right there. Yeah, that's right. A, yeah, <laughs> that's retro. It's, it's still in the UK. <laughs> I need to get it. I need to somehow work out how to get it here. Oh wow! Um, but yeah, that that I just remember trying that out and thinking, oh, this is like the future. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and I guess it, it, it is kind of nice. it is. Yeah, you know, everyone's got VR. Wow. So. Well, so. Oh, t- tell me this too. Do you have a do you have a common snack that you uh, that Ooh. you go to for when you're animating and you're at the mm. desk and got to remember to eat I, and all that? Yeah, yeah. Um, common. I would say probably chocolate covered raisins. I think. Oh, chocolate covered. Go to. That's good stuff. You're like, ah, oh, it's kind of fruit. <laughs> right. It was at one it point was, in time. Well, yeah, at one yeah. point it was healthy. Yeah. Um, and now it's covered in sugar and chocolate. So. <laughs> oh yeah, I like that. What about one. you? What do you? It's. Have? Uh, I like mint Kit Kats, Ooh. and I keep them cold in the fridge. So there's a fridge oh, that's, that's always a great in this room. Idea. Oh, they're so good, man! That that's is the best awesome. thing. If if those ever go away, it seems like everything I like always has like a season to it. Oh yeah. And then yeah. next thing you know, you can't access it, so I usually have to buy it in bulk or bulk. I yeah. Don't know. yeah. yeah. I've so sad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I do that. I do that with pencils. I'm like, oh, all right. I'll oh buy yeah. Five hundred pencils. And <laughs> how about as far as as far as animations that inspired you? What would you say mm-hmm. is your you can use more than one. You don't have to pick just one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'd say probably the first bleh, the first one would be um, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. I'd oh, say. okay. I remember <sighs> watching that on VHS 
to the end, rewinding it, waiting and pressing play again, watching the whole thing, like maybe three or four times in a row. Oh, wow. Um, um, I think, and Watership Down was a big thing when I was young. Uh-huh. Uh, I just liked how gruesome it was. <laughs> <laughs> It's probably a bit sad, a bit scary. But um I think what I I think I just like that they didn't um sugarcoat it. Like it wasn't yeah. like, oh the bunny dirt, you know. Right. Spoilers, but you know. <laughs> um but it's there's blood and there's like real it feels real and this stuff right. happens. Um there's a lot of color then, in it. Right, yeah. Yes, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um and then I think probably something more uh of recent it's probably song of the sea oh yeah i love that movie i think it's something so um i don't know like i don't know a whole lot of, about irish folk tales which mm-hmm. is probably terrible seeing as i'm from england we should i should <laughs> let them in school but um i don't know there's something about that movie even if you don't know where like the origins of it like you can feel all the all that I don't know, like they have a lot of movement in that one too. There's a lot of exactly, yeah, like history and creativity and the 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 love of the country and yeah, yeah. I just there's something about those paintings and drawings is just. um, I think that's probably my favorite at the moment. I would say Um, there's so many though. Yeah. Yeah. It, it is is that is it kind of a thing where you you can watch something more recently and and that becomes your thing for a little while or um I guess there's a I mean I suppose, I always think I always look at those you know top 100 movies of all time that come right, out right. I don't know every year or whatever and it's always like whatever movie came out that year is like number yeah. 1 or 2 and you're like huh unless it's like Godfather or something Yeah um but no I don't have too much recency bias uh, I think it's just usually what happens is I'll I'll watch something and then it will just trump the top spot and you know everything else gets put to the bottom. <laughs> right. Um, but Song of the Sea's been up there for a bit now. I think um, for a while I think Monsters Inc was pretty you know it's pretty high on my. Yeah, it sounds like it had an impact on you. Yeah. So yeah, is hair. A- You're just all into that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I tip my hat to the people that do that side yeah. of thing. The the sort of. Well, did uh, did you do some of the hair stuff in Leap or or whatever you want to call it? Oh, I mean, like there was a no. lot of yeah, there's a lot of hair stuff there. So for that, that was all uh, simulated. So that's was another depart. Uh, that's another department of people. Oh, um, okay. You can because she had like a plat, I think. Yeah, she had a plat. Uh, you can um, pose it maybe and say, "Look, I want the plat like Brad's on this come side, over. or sure. I want it that." Yeah, and you so you can say to them like, "This is my intention." Right. But generally, because I think um, I don't know actually why they I don't know if it was a budget thing or just a choice. I I can't remember, but um, yeah, they had a whole other department for that side of things. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, it's the same. The current show I'm on, the they take care of the the hair and. Oh, okay. Stuff. Yeah, it's definitely like a whole other, like, yeah, that whole, you know, um, clothes as well. Like the, I think, in oh, yeah, the movement. address, right? And stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, it's that to me is like, I don't know how they do that. I, yeah. I, to me, it's so ridiculous thinking that I thought I could. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's so hard and technical. Yeah. There's, Amazing. I mean, there's programs you can buy that, yeah, and they have a lot of the assets and it yes. drapes on and things like that, but yeah, they're expensive. Yeah. I mean, like yeah. not something you can just do as a, <laughs> like, huh? yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, we, we had a little bit in cat and moth where, um, it wasn't cloth or anything, but it was, um, I say cat and moth. Yeah. I thought I said cat and cloth then, like no cloth. Um, uh, it, we had some like hard objects, like a mug or something. And uh, we had those smash and just like the technical logistics to get around like a hard object just to make it break into pieces. It was like, oh, is it, it's not modeled quite how we needed it to break. And, oh yeah. So I have no idea how the, like the, the maths and talent goes into working out all that cloth stuff. It's crazy. Um, and little things like, you know, if in your animation, maybe there's an, 
unperceptible like movement that's like maybe a little like pop or something mm -hmm. but it's really small and you, like you can sort of you don't really see it when you're watching it you're like uh, whatever maybe you missed it maybe you you know maybe it's not um visible but when as soon as you add the cloth and the cloth going boop Right. And you're like, hey, oh, that there's doesn't like, <laughs> yeah, there's something, and you know, you can get a uh, shot sent back, and you're like, can you clean up this thing? And you're like, oh, I can't really see it. And then maybe you'll go into, um, we have a graph which shows us the movement, mm -hmm. and you might see like a tiny, like, um, imperfection Blip. in the graph, yeah. yeah, and it might be imperceivable, but you can just fix that and right. it's fine. And you're like, Oh, okay. Statistically cool. it's there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's and fine. it like the calculations are affected by it. it yeah. Right. It's some of it's really like, um, delicate. Yeah. Um, so Tip, you're a studio Ghibli person too, right? Yes. A little bit. Yeah. yeah. So they, I mean, controversy there is of course they crossed over and started to, they, they've always used some level of 3d animation, but mm -hmm. they, they did a, a full animated film, uh, recently. Oh, did did you see that? No. Oh, Oh wait, I have, so, I have. Yes. I did seen, you? Yes. Yes. I've is seen it, the, it's, uh, it's like trailers. earwig and something. I can't remember what it's called, but anyway. Yeah. I saw some it, stuff on yeah. Twitter, I think. What so yeah? What what's your thought on that sort of thing? That change in, uh, I don't know, style. Um, yeah, I guess. I mean, it's a tool and it's a medium, so it's like, will I use plasticine or will I use um, CG or two D or whatever? Right. Um, so I don't really see it as a problem. I think the only thing. Oh, I'm remembering that trailer now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it just it just came back to me. Yes. Um, yeah, so I think they're all mediums and all tools to create your vision or whatever that is. But I think there's something in 2D that's so charming and, um, you know, you can draw or make what you want. Like, I want this shape. Okay, like, we'll mm -hmm. do it. Uh, CG makes that a little harder to achieve. And it's not that it's impossible or anything. Right. You can um, render something to look like it's painted or yeah, something like and that I think if you there's want. A, yeah, there's a ton of lovely examples of it of animation feeling charming and feeling that way. Mm -hmm. I just think there's something, I um, don't know, it, for me personally, like more tactile about yeah. the... It's more tuning. organic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess the 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 nature of the actual medium is more free. And so you get that through watching it. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas CG, because of the, the you're sort of fighting the computer a bit, I think that's, it's always going to be hard to push past, but yeah, not to say it's impossible. Um, uh, so personally, I, I would, I like their 2D movies. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But, but I think everyone should experiment. Like You're right. it's it's just a medium. Yeah. So um, but yeah, I I mean you only you only learn by trying. So if they don't try it, they they don't know, I guess. Right. Whether, right. whether it's for them or, you know, or the future of the studio or I mean it might maybe it comes down to like local um uh talent too. Like maybe, you know, I don't know what the economy is like and what the education side of things is there but maybe there's a lot of saturated cg artists at the moment i don't know um so maybe they're trying to like pin a bit of that part of the yeah. market but, um, i think the production value is a little bit better than it it's funny because I, I remember when with film they would spend a lot of money to do some like really old school uh, effects versus doing the simple thing that would be 3D animating something because at that time it was so mm -hmm. expensive to do 3D stuff oh, and then yeah. render it well enough to put it onto film. Yeah. And now that would be the 100% go to because Jimmy Dell the Street can do it, you know? <laughs> so. Yes. Yeah, there's definitely, yeah, there's, I mean, I guess as well with 2D, you can have um, rigs and uh, not flash anymore but um to boom i still use splash even though it's not yeah supported. It's sort of di dying a death right <laughs> yeah yeah um, animates okay but yeah yeah right. <laughs> uh so i guess there's like you know there's a lower budget 2d uh uh shows but mm -hmm. yeah i don't know i mean i guess it's 
I still go back to that it's a medium. So it depends what you want from your project, I suppose. Yeah. yeah, it's really a tricky subject because it affects a lot of people and markets and companies. So if they go a different, if, if uh, uh, you know, a company decides to go a different route, that might mean that everyone at the company that's currently there is obsolete or, you know, or they don't agree or they don't, that's not their passion. So then mm-hmm. they have to go somewhere else, you know. It, yeah, it's definitely a, a weird balance of things. But then if you don't try something, then you don't know if you don't try. Right, so, right. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's the theme to take yeah. home. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. I, I feel like there's no right answer, I guess. I know you've already told me this before, but like, what, what would you say are your recommendations for somebody that's wanting to go into animation? Um, whether, whether they're a kid or, or they're, you know, they're going into university or, or college or whatever you want to call it, mm-hmm. uh, what, what would be the paths and the things that you're recommending that they try out? So I have a couple of, well, I have two, two experiences, one of mine mm-hmm. <laughs> and two by proxy, my partner, he changed careers at 30 ish. So I have sort of, I guess, a little bit of insight to both like starting earlier and starting later I guess he was more La- architecture later. wasn't he but yes yeah so yeah he did architecture uh university um he worked in San Francisco and did a bunch of stuff and then he decided to change career completely um and he went through um a bit like Logan like starting with I animate um, and working through uh, just learning all the principles and uh, and getting in that way um, through for someone yeah so one it's never too late whatever age I don't think um, and I think to start with probably finding like a an easy gateway in so maybe starting with 2D there's a lot of like free or cheap softwares now if you have um a pc mm-hmm. there's a, a program called critter which is completely free um and so that's a good way to just sort of uh start animating it doesn't maybe that's not the medium that you will end up doing or whatever but it, you can learn the principles so bouncing ball um that's like the main one mainly because it teaches it's an easy shape to start with uh, it's not complicated and it teaches you a lot of the sort of basic uh, spacing, timing. Physics. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's, if you type in animation principles, there's a whole heap of different things you can start with. Um, there's like the main 12 principles that the Disney Nine Old Men sort of forged together. Uh, but there's also a whole, uh, there's like blogs of like um, exercises you could do, like, uh, different types of bouncing balls, balls with tails, um, mm-hmm. just legs, um, full body people walking. Um, Richard Williams has a very good, um, uh, what's it, animation survival kit, his book. Wow. Um, that's quite a popular, um, like, that's what most people start with. They look, they read through his book. Um, so I'd say that's a good place to start. It starts quite simple. Um there's oh and youtube i mean youtube has everything oh yeah (laughs) Yeah. type in bouncing ball youtube you'll find the thing and then i if cg is something you're really interested in blender as we talked about earlier is free so i think that's probably what i would i haven't used it but if um money is an issue then and you have a computer then blender is a good way to go i think um recording what well, I like when I started out I was recording um different bouncing balls so I get a bunch together like I had a baseball a basketball had a whole ton and filmed them myself because there is reference online that you can find but I think there's something about doing it yourself you're really observing what the ball's doing and learning about the material and feeling them whereas watching the reference on YouTube is fine but you you're not experiencing it. And I think at least to start with, it's nice to experience uh, those materials and considering, you know, the basketball is bouncing on a wooden floor or a concrete floor or uh, whatever that may be. 
So that can change how you perceive those materials. Um, yeah, so I think just really simple, I think, is the, the main way to go. Start with those things. If, you, if you've got, if you're in an education uh, institution, you, you should be able to get my for free for mm-hmm. three years, I think, or for the, um, uh, for the amount of time your course is long. Um, so you can try Maya that way. Um, yeah, I think that's where, it, yeah. What, what about as far as like setting yourself up for a sustainable career? Okay. What's, yeah. what are the keys? Um, so my takeaways have been, uh, networking is number one, mm-hmm. biggest one. I think beyond your showreel and your work or whatever you've got. Uh, ready I think networking um, and a open attitude I would say because I think people are just more willing to help someone that's just really eager and um, and open to uh, uh, discussion I guess conversation Um, and that will help the networking side of things because if uh, let me think of the right way to say this. Um, Flexibility you know, it, is a good thing. Yeah, like so. If it, say you're um, you're emailing with someone, or it's LinkedIn or whatever, mm-hmm. and maybe they they send you or um, you found someone on Twitter to get some advice or feedback, or whatever, and they message you back with the advice that you've asked for, and then you're like, "Cool, right? I'm off. I'm gonna go do the thing," and you don't reply. There's even that, like, it, it's enough for someone to go, oh, okay, well, maybe I won't reply to it. Like, maybe I won't send feedback to anyone, mm-hmm. which probably won't because they're doing it anyway. But there's something about that exchange that if you keep doing those, with, like, exchanges where they're sort of one way, um, it just, I don't know, it doesn't gel together. Whereas if you use those conversations as, like, um building a rapport and building um, relationships with people and just being interested, I think will take a, take you a long way. Um, actually a lot of the jobs I ended up getting were through just being interested in the person or the company. So I would message someone and be like, Hey, I really like the stuff your company does. Uh, not necessarily to try and get a job with them or anything, but like, mm-hmm. uh, how do you do this? Or, what university would you recommend for me to do this stuff? Or right. um, just kind of having questions, having, um, yeah, having questions that um, show your interest in, in what you're doing. Uh, and I think whether those conversations lead to something more is like a bonus. Mm-hmm. So you can't think of them as like transactional, like fake, like, oh, I feel like I'm not, I'm being like trying to make fake friends or anything. Mm-hmm. Um, it's more about just trying to build relationships within the industry. Uh, and then m- one day, maybe that person might be the recruiter on the show that you love. And then they'll be like, Hey, I know you, do you want to come and do this thing? Um, and if they don't, it doesn't matter. You've just made more friends and right. the industry is really small. So the more people, you know, the better, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was a really scrappy answer <laughs> no that's pretty <laughs> to, to good networking. it seems like everybody that i've talked to uh one extent or another uh talked to to uh nixon gerber they they do a lot of miniature they build stuff kind of like your couch there and stuff for and oh, now cool. they're doing a lot for uh netflix and things mm-hmm. so and but the way that they got started was a lot of doing a lot of things for free you know yeah. uh as yeah. well like you have a friend that's working on a project you do that you know, and and maybe that leads to something. Yeah. I think I have a weird um, relationship with the free stuff because it's like, I want to be an advocate for the, you know, company. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Yeah. Like there shouldn't be free overtime and all this stuff, but there's there's also a point where you're like a a choice as an individual. Do you want to work on something because you're um, interested in it? Right. And maybe it's a passion project. Like Catamalf is a passion project right. and we had no money. Uh, my money just went towards, you know, licensing and stuff, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so I wouldn't encourage working for free if it's a, 
a corporation where they yeah. have money they should be yeah. paying you right but yeah there might be like maybe um another thing i've been thinking about recently is um making uh fake briefs there's a podcast i was listening to and they talk a lot about making your brief for the company that you would love to work at so uh -huh. if you were at i don't know nickelodeon or whoever whatever your right. favorite company is and what would they assign you to do and then at home you're like they would assign me to do this and then you make it uh -huh. um because that's the kind of work you want to be making uh -huh. and so by osmosis that will lead to you having a portfolio to fit into those types of places where you want to work however big or small they are so i think that that with the networking side of things um building a portfolio of stuff you you want to make if you just fill it with like generic um cookie cutter uh you know they want right. to see a walk cycle and they want to see a dinosaur uh, whatever <laughs> <laughs> you might not Slowly care hair moving <laughs> yeah you might not care about any of those things so when you start at that job they're like oh that person liked dinosaurs and you're like no oh, i really hate them actually i don't want right. to work on that and then you get typecast and then you're, you're right stuck, you know I, th I think what, yeah, one thing about the free stuff that from my experience has been, uh, and a lot of people don't know this, but if you're an artist or you're a photographer or things like that, what you make is yours unless you're under contract. And yes. so when you do do some of these free things, like you own that thing. Yeah. Uh, and, and so the upside is, yeah, you can, you can use it to market yourself and yeah, you can, exactly. you can yeah. walk away with it too. Uh, yeah. it's just a reason to do it kind of thing. Yeah, so. I think so. And I think, yeah, it's down to your choice and just don't get exploited, I guess, you know? Right. You right. Know. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, uh, there's definitely, um, a lot that you can play with, uh, for your showreel, uh, portfolio and, I think, yeah, I, it's it's tricky. Uh, I think stability, going back, you were saying about stability, I think if you concentrate on those things, um, making those connections, going to maybe, I mean, it's harder at the moment, but post-COVID, mm -hmm. going to local uh, events, um, whether it's film or animation or um, anything that's relevant if you if you can find something that's nearby that you can go to even if it's small or if there's nothing make your own maybe there's right. people like you in the area i did that in london i made a um a group called anim gather oh although our tagline was not just for animators <laughs> oh. because i wanted anybody in our industry to come yeah. and there were so many events in london that were based around students showing their portfolios and professionals coming along as a favor like to give feedback but I really just wanted to make a get together where it was people could talk shop if they wanted to mm -hmm. but it was more of just about just coming together and hanging out and not worrying about like there being a protocol or being like I have to be the expert at talk my work thing. yeah yeah exactly yeah. like it's just a bit of fun mm -hmm. so we I did them seasonally we had like in the summer, we had a big picnic, and in the winter, we went inside to a big pub, <laughs> as you oh. do in England. And um, <laughs> it's very, very English things. Um, and uh, each time, about 50 people would come, uh, which shocked me on its own. And actually, I know a lot of people, I actually got some jobs through that now. Oh, like okay. the Willoughby's, um, one of the guys that came to that, uh, ended up working on the Willoughby's who then brought me and Martin across from the UK. Wow. So, so it was like really, uh, you know, I didn't plan for that. I just wanted to hang out with people <laughs> and have a right. picnic. Um, so you can make your own. Um, and regardless of people's levels in the industry, you don't know where they'll go or who they'll know. And right. I think just the more, com uh, the more friends, the better, I think, especially um, the industry can be tricky, you know, like uh, making sure you're getting paid fairly. Right. And all those right. things. If you have a lot of friends and places, you can all talk about that stuff and mm -hmm. make sure you're all being paid fairly and being right. treated the right way. Like, you know, oh, this happened to me at work. Is that OK? And yeah. everyone can sort of combine their experiences. Are there unions out there in, in Canada as far as uh, animation or film? There's 
I think one just started up uh, recently, earlier this year, I think, uh, with Titmouse. They had their own mm. uh, one. Uh, but there's, I don't think there's any others. The UK have one that is going. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know where they're at at the moment, but they, they're trying to get everyone on board. But London's very, oh, well, I guess the UK is hard. Um, there's not as many, um, like here we have Otai, uh, sorry. Here we have overtime pay. Mm-hmm. I guess the US has their, like I know in California, they have the unions and and a bit yeah. more protection, but the UK, uh, you don't have that. So hmm. all the all the contracts are like, you're, you know, you'll work 40 hours a week, but you'll right. probably work whatever we want you to. <laughs> you're getting paid for getting the job done, not for the number of hours you work. Yeah, kind of exactly. Mm-hmm. And that, that can be hard i think um so i think the more people that are in contact with each other you know can band together and hopefully like take you know ha- stronger in numbers i guess right Try and look after each other um but yeah net networking i think yeah is my number one st- to stability because uh just it, uh, even on a okay more business side of things not just having loads of friends <laughs> yeah, yeah. around um just knowing the different recruiters and where they work and what companies mm. they're at, asking them questions about, oh, what does your, what does this company expect to see or, or whatever it might be? Um, right. I found that, you know, even if you're not ready to go, like for instance, Sony, I was in contact with them about five years prior to working with them. Mm. So they knew my name slowly over time. And then when it came to work for them, they're like, hey, we've got a job coming up. And I'm like, oh, cool. I'm ready. You know, they think I'm ready. I feel right. ready. And so it doesn't, it never has to be like, I don't know. You don't have to think about it. Like, I want a job now. Let's apply. Right. They're, it says they're hiring. Right. Um, I just ignore all that. <laughs> is, is there, a, there is a learning curve though. I mean, like when you, I'm sure that you've got something you've taken away from each of these jobs that you didn't have. When you went into it, right? Uh, oh yeah, yes, yeah, that yeah, variety. I I was at Framestore for like f- for five years, I think, altogether. And however much that was like an incredible like boost to my whole future career, I think there was a little bit of um, because of the which sounds counterintuitive because of the amount of time I was there, mm-hmm. I was probably not expanding my horizons enough I guess experiences wise because I was so ingrained in the ecosystem and you know I basically grew up there as as a professional person um and then once you start to experience other companies you start to say oh this company does it this way and this and then when you go I don't know eventually if you go to whatever your dream job is um you can use all those things you've learned right all those experiences and I feel like those multifacets are really useful. Um, but I mean, not to say that staying at one company is a bad thing. It's lovely if you can stay there for, if you love it, right? Well, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, but always having something at least as a plan B. Yeah. Yeah, in the background. You, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Just like, projects just end. Have, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And exactly. Uh, a lot like all the films I've been on, the contract is for the length of the film. Right. You know, it's not the, it's not like you're in a, a full-time employee or always some people are but mm. um yeah so always having those kind of uh, back things on the back burner people you know hey what's this project that sounds cool I want to try and like line up my job so I can get on that thing you know right. um yeah it's definitely a bit of a like chess game I'd say mm-hmm. but I don't want to make it sound it's hard to not make it sound like manipulative or fake or anything like that because you can be genuinely interested in these. Yeah. Well, people. there is. I mean, like when I was in film, the saying was that the problem with film is an art is that it's a business, and the problem with film is a business is that it's an art. Right. You get it. You, if you can't play both sides and you don't know how to do that, it's hard to make that be yeah. something that you can live off of, kind of yeah, thing. Yeah. You know? Exactly. Yeah. Or do exactly. well with. Yeah. yeah, and it's not like, you know, I don't. I don't have 200 people that I'm really good friends with or anything. I have like five people, <laughs> but mm-hmm. just having a lot of industry friends and acquaintances. And I think there's just, 
that leads to stability because you through those connections you find other avenues to fill potential gaps or um whatever it may be between other projects or maybe you're trying to line up a certain thing you really uh wanted to work for maybe you got offered a job but it's in six months time so now you need to fill that six months gap right right um the other thing i probe now <laughs> being a slightly less immature <laughs> It's probably finances is a thing I never thought about um, for stability. I just, uh, I mean, I did think about it. You got to buy the chocolate of, covered raisins. Right. Somehow, yes. Right? <laughs> yes. Exactly. Um, and there was like, I always was aware of like saving for the gaps uh, and being aware of that, which is fine. But I never, I, I was so, um, I, well, uh, from what I find from my friends and, and things is that a lot of our industry doesn't, and a lot of schools, I guess, don't have much financial education. Hmm. Um, but that's something I consider because because of the nature of the industry and the, the contract work is like starting early with the savings and starting early with um, anywhere that offers you uh, any sort of benefits money-wise, just like jumping on that bandwagon straight away. Mm -hmm. I definitely have been at a couple of places where I didn't do that and I should have in hindsight. Um, so then like even if it's like you're putting – one pound or one dollar away a week mm -hmm. or something in an account in 50 years time that's going to be more than one dollar you know right um just something small just to get going i've just it's just come up recently because a few people have been asking me about it and i've been wanted to do like a, maybe a presentation or talk about it or something yeah because it it's sort of a bit forgotten i think yeah i always talk about networking and things but i think finances is, is yeah because you know maybe covid happens and you have six months without work um, right yeah there's a lot of people that went into this you, you know a lot of people that aren't just working at home they aren't working right now yes, right I yeah mean, exactly yeah and i mean obviously you can't plan for pandemics but the film industry is very uh, volatile so oh yeah there's the thing I like is I like to plan for the gaps in a good way. Like, oh, I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, I want that gap so I can make right. something. Right. Um, so you can look at them in different ways. Uh, obviously, it's different if you have a family and lots of overhead and, mm -hmm. and other responsibilities. Like the most I have is quite an expensive cat that mm -hmm. seems to come up with all <laughs> all the ailments. Right. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, Bless him. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, so that's something I would say. I can't remember what I said now. Networking, finances, <laughs> and there was one of the, oh, portfolio. Yeah, yeah. Do it, making what you want to make. Sometimes thinking about the big goal is fun and or and you know it's cool, but it can be very overwhelming because you're like, how do I how do I I don't know get to Disney or whatever it whatever it is, and it just thinking about that can put you off because uh it's you know there's it's not clear what the steps are it's not clear uh, it's too big it's too exciting whatever it is so then i think the best way is to look at the little the littlest step what is the littlest step if you're very anxious very shy very introverted or if you're not on any of those things i think just finding that little step um and the littlest step can be like signing up to a forum and that's step one you signed up, you did it, cool. Maybe you just read through what everyone's talking about. You don't join in straight away. And then maybe you start to join in the conversation. Maybe you don't share any of your work because you're too worried about it or you're too anxious and that's okay. Um, there's discords and all those things now, billions of different uh, forums you can find. And I think just um, building up that, that confidence and then just showing your work, like try a bouncing ball, show it on one of those forums or a friend and see if, you know, see if people react, see what feedback you can get from it and go from there. Um, and then watch, probably watch a bunch of things that you really enjoy to get the sort of creative juices flowing. But um, don't compare yourself because everyone, everyone starts somewhere. I can show you my first <laughs> show reels and things. Will you? Uh, yes. Yeah. I can <laughs> right. send you. I can okay, send you. Send I can send you how you know how bad <laughs> bad I was. But I, I had to start somewhere, right? Mm. Um, and now I'm actually I'm gonna say if you don't try it, you don't know. <laughs> um, 
So, and the only way is to, you know, to find out is if you like it is to do it and not being, not being, it's hard to say, don't be scared of the blank page or the, or whatever, but just start really small. Um, don't worry about it being crap. It doesn't have to, oh, am I allowed to swear? <laughs> Yeah, that wasn't Sorry. really a square of a sure. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm I'm never sure. Um uh don't yeah, don't worry about it being crap. It doesn't have to go in your hallway, it doesn't have to go on TV, you know, it's not it, it's just about exploring your creativity and bringing things to life. So yeah, that's what I would say, I think. I hope that made sense. <laughs> no, that was awesome. Yeah. I want to thank India Bernardo Ooh. once again for spending time with us. And yeah, also, yeah. if you'd like to learn more about her as well as her current projects, make sure that you check out the links below. She's also been nice enough to be able to give us some additional information oh, about yeah. becoming an animator and the best ways yeah. to do that. Also, like, subscribe, comment below. Let us know about your experiences and some of the projects that you've made. And stay tuned for more of your Geek Fix.